I suppose so. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm eating uh, my Dairy Queen here. <laughs> but yeah, I know it. We go um, pretty steady at the uh, at Brimball here, trying to get the tournament going. So it's hard to actually get the teams actually uh, ready and play. But then it's us that has the time to get ready and play as well. We're live now, so we're live at the JD MacArthur Arena, and we're seeing the team missing the C uh, Seaway Valley Devils, Auto or uh, Ontario and Quebec, an Ottawa team, the Seaway Devils, and the Quebec miss. Um, Quebec contingency is here is strong. You can see some of the the coaches there on the the Quebec team, or some of them are the same with the guys teams that were just playing. So it's pretty. Uh, it'll be another uh, really good gold medal game. The Seaway Valley Devils team. This is a uh, team that we saw, that I saw Thursday night. They actually have a very good club here. Um, Catch your breath. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> running down the hallway. Um, but they, this is kind of a team that you saw one, two, almost in this division. And you look at, at this team and you go, I can see why they're in this position with Team Miss because very good club. And you know what? Even though Team Miss is six and zero, Billy, it's Seaway. It's, they they, they, all, can, they every, can. They each team just needs one more win. Yep. And it doesn't matter what the record was. You could be six and zero. You could be. You could be. Make it to the A side with a three and three. As long as you win that final game, you got a you got a piece of hardware going around your neck. So. Seaway Valley Devils. A uh, couple girls to keep in mind. Maxine Durer Pentony. A little bit of a, a mouthful there, though. But she's number 19. Came up with a big game-winning goal for her squad. Also, Elaine Ginak. She's going to be an important player as well for her squad. And Keely Zanbelt. We have to. We've talked about the goaltending already. We'll bring it up another time. Zanbelt. Three of them on this team. Emily Zanbild is a cousin <laughs> of Kira and Keeley. And if that if the game plan is to be aggressive and try to outrun this team as team, I'm not 100 percent sure from what I've heard of, of this team as team. They're a very quick club. And they also have a lot of firepower, so it's going to be interesting to see yeah. what the Devils do. We've seen them in their in their opening warm-ups where they're all synchronized. They, they had their own workout, and then it's it shows shows maturity and professionalism when they're playing. And but it, that could reflect in their playing style too, where they're all on the same page. They all know where each other are, but they look quick and they're intense. They're fired up. So, as we mentioned, Keely Zanbelt. The goaltender for the Seaway Valley Devils. You're looking at the the netminder there for the Team Miss Quebec team. And uh, when we get a number in just a minute, I believe it's going to be Justine Godelin, who's the goaltender. Some players to mention as well on the Team Miss side of things: Julianne Deschamps, Sarah Caron. Lan Duguay, Claudine Pellerin, Justine Boldock. You see Keely Zanbelt there. 0 0.86 goals against average. She's got a 5 and 2 record. Four shutouts, too. Four <laughs> shutouts. So this is going to be no easy matchup for Team S. As we're underway here at the women's gold medal game the JD MacArthur Arena here in Owen Sound starting off early the Devils in Team Misses N yeah they're coming at it it'll be it, it uh, usually Ottawa is a very physical team very fast but uh, you find with the Quebec teams it'll be a lot of finesse and passing and they just they know how to play the game, the back and forth, but uh, it's, it almost seems like those old standards have sometimes gone out of the way where it's, they're both very physical, very strong. 
Emily Moreau, the netminder for Team S, number 89 there. You see her, and those are her records. 6-0 and with a 0.67 goals against average, three shutouts, only four goals allowed in this entire tournament. One of the big parts to this Team S club as she does a good job playing her corners. And yeah, you know what? Even though she might be a little bit smaller, she still does a great job of being able to cut off those corners. Good stop there as this ball goes into the far right corner. Worked around side. This is number 55, Brittany Poor Dubach from the Team Miss Quebec team. She now will have it. He's worked it back across the other way. Great chance for Brian. Smart play to get that ball out of the stick. Just off the stick and it hits the ball instead of taking a tripping or slashing. Now Dubuck chasing that ball. Dubuck fights off the defender. Shot in front. Scores! Claudine Kellerin with the nice wrap around behind the back, out in front of the net. She kind of caught them by surprise. It seems like, seemed like a dead play, and then all of a sudden she gra uh, grabs a goal. You see it here, Dubok does a great job shaking off her defender, with Sarah Richet, and then just a nice- Just squeezed it through, yeah, just caught the right side. It's like one of those bank passes, or those bank shots he's making in, uh, playing pool and it was a great chance now early on here I think this is one of the earliest goals that we've had yeah in this tournament that ball is well out of play Five, 15 58 early on in this first period and there's quite the size difference sometimes like the, well, the two smallest girls on the ice would be the centers but those are the ones you usually got to look out for because you don't really necessarily see them coming but they're the ones that fight the hardest to get in it because uh, they want to compete and they want to deal with it there's Marie Soleil Dumont Dumas behind the net works one way shot blocked Zanvel with the same good ball control behind the net just walks right out tries to with that well with that curve stick too you can get the ball up and over the shoulder there's something that has more than you used to so you, more goalies have to be aware of that when they're hugging the post not necessarily like a goalie that gets low on his knees or on the ground it you still got a five foot um, net behind you still got to stand up he's off one by the seaway valley devils battle hard in the corner Back the other way. We really haven't seen much possession, much offense come here from the Devils. Yes, it is early on, but Team yep. is holding a lot of the reps right now in possession time in the Devils' own end. And as we mentioned that, might be a little bit of offense here as Ebby Fighting in there. Team S isn't giving them any opportunities as soon as they get the ball to rain on them. Justine Bolduck flips that into the corner for Marie Ann Dumont Chamberlain. There's a that's a, a, a full long name there. <laughs> Marie Ann Dumont Chamberlain. Back the other way. That's Jasmine McNairn. She's now playing defense. As they've got Bolio the other way. Shot, block, save. Great chance there. 
She's just left wide open. Someone didn't see her. Look, you gotta look around your corner. If you don't have somebody, you get on somebody. You know, a lot of a lot of time on your defense, you see a forward with, that's not being covered. Well, if you're not covering anybody, you're on. <laughs> Devils, one thing I've noticed right now is the Devils defense kind of spread out a little bit. They're still giving teammates a little bit more room to be able to work inside there. You'd think that they'd want to tighten that up a little more, Billy. Get some more passes on, but they've been, they were struggling just to get it over the red line, but now that they have it in there, now they're just trying to get some possession and control. The team S is even all over them in their when the Devils want to be on the on the <laughs> the offensive, fight in the corner there. That is Emily Zanbelt. Great play by Bollinger. Now it's going to be Blair Burnett. Burnett's going to track this one. Along with Zan Belt into the corner. Oh, waved off the ace. He's got to run for it. Back the other way. Here's Riche. Getting the wheels going. Riche goes into the boards. Looking back there with Jesse Riche. Jessica Riche. Now, uh, looks like there's going to be an injury timeout come up here as Sarah Riche got hit pretty hard into those far boards. We'll take a look here. And correction. Looked like she, yeah, she hit her knee right into it as soon as she was kind of in a vulnerable position, but um, finishing her check when she tried to turn around, she jammed her knee into the side. Yeah. So while Riche down there. Certainly don't think anything malicious came from it, but uh, it's good that they're playing with intensity. And a lot of the times you, and, it, and, I, and when I, I talk to other uh, girls that have played hockey and stuff like that, where there is no body contact and no hitting, and it's, you, you almost wonder why there is more body contact. Part of the game, you see this in girls' uh, broom ball where it's full body contact. There's nothing any different than the guys and the girls, and they they take a hit and they give hits, and it's strong. But people think when the girl gets hit, she's going to be hurt. No, these girls are more strong than most. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned it on Thursday night to Phil Davis. I, I said that some of the hits that they're laying out, I don't want to be on the other end of that. No. And there's, they, when they shoot the ball, they got strong shots and everything. Like, these girls are tough. I mean, why not let them hit? There should, should be more body contact in the hockey and other sports. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that, that some of these girls enjoy the fact that they can yeah. go into the boards, make a good play, be able to throw the body a little bit. Because initially, it does help tire out Oh, it's, it's effective too. You take you take away the the possession and take away the body away from the ball. All right. Here comes Team S again as this one is now turned over. Back the other way, Jessica Henley. She misses on it. Picked up by Zan Belt. Walked in front. And that'll be Woodside who will play that off the boards. There's Durer Pentany. Game winner back on Thursday night. Helped vault them into that second spot in the standings. Kaylee McRae now after that ball. Looks like it's going to be a high stick. And then go on for two minutes. And Seaway Valley going to be on a, a power play here. First power play for them. See if they can finally get that goal back for them. Take it back to a one-one game so they can rebound and 
start over again. Again, yeah. Uh, you've got Eliza Bollinger, and they're taking the face off for the Devils. The face off win is key, especially in there, and that way you can set up real easy. So, scrambling around, killing time. They did just that, were able to win the face off. Eliza Bollinger at the top, she's gonna work this in, pass it over to Coons. Back to Bollinger. Bollinger with the shot. Deflected in front. Shot. Good save there. Tried to go overhead, but just uh, too close to the goalie and put it right over. Devils, it seems like they have a little bit of a spark here now. Good player. Good chance here as Burnett passes it over to Bollinger. Back to Burnett. To Bollinger. Good ball movement, quick passes. There's Coons, shot wide. Bollinger takes the shot. Burnett, excuse me. Back to Bollinger now. She'll work in. Over to Burnett, shot wide. Back the other way now. Coons is going to grab this. Bollinger with the shot, deflected. And she's going to, what a play. Just keeps it in. That's a great, a great play to make sure that it... Well, in, in hockey, it's the blue line for the offside, but that red line, you mean that everyone that's all the way down the corner has to come all the way back, so that's a lot of time to kill. And there are 23 seconds left to go in this power play. First of the game for them. The shot's deflected in front over to Coons. Coons now works back. Shot over to the other side of the ice. Five seconds left, aiming to get one more shot off for this power play. And now it's over, back to even strength. And Coons will just fire this into the corner. As back the other way come Team S. Yeah. No, it's a great, great kill by the Team S, but uh, the Devils just kept trying to sh shoot and it wasn't going through, just blocking shots. Like, like they said, girls are tough. They're going to take a shot. And then Zan Belt flips this one into the opposing end. Marie Soleil Dumas with the shot. Almost picked that far left corner. Would have been a great way to put her team up by two. Sarah Riche now. Slow to get up earlier, but now she seems like she's no worse for wear. Back in the offensive rush. Henley just misses her target. Now into the corner goes Jeanac. She'll turn the ball over. Scooped up by McNairn. It was almost a, looks like there could have been too many men there. Yeah, it could have been. Um, I think the girl that was substituting was uh, was already off the ice for the one who touched, but you, you gotta be careful with those. I, and it drives me nuts sometimes when guys go through the doors when they should be jumping the boards because that way, one way in, one way out. Yep. Jessica Henley with the strong play. Knocking her. Defender down. Now in the corner is Melody Bolio. She gets worked off the ball and back the other way. Here they come. Here's Alexi Lordy. Lordy misses that. And McCray throws it down into the team miss zone. Good way for them to be able to get some fresh legs out there. Kaylin Ebby, she's doing what she can to hold off the team player. 
in the corner. Zanvelt turns it over. Now back the other way. Zanvelt will now fire it down into the other end and uh, looks like it's trying to beat out the ice. Oh, no, did not. Just short of beating out that ice. 5.58 left to go in the first. Team mess up 1-0 over the Seaway Valley Devils. This, this uh, head coach here for Team Miss named the head coach of the year last night at the banquet. He, he also coaches a blitz team. If you did see the camera shots in one of our other games, you'd notice him. Shows you how, how much involved everyone is, the, from the coaches to the fans to the parents, uh, especially with the juveniles. But then when you get to the seniors, you got the wife and the kids who are pretty much always up there rink with you too. So you get used to arena food, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blair Burnett. Can't clear it out. Back the other way. That's Anne-Marie Dumont Chamberlain. Now has Pellerin in the corner. Pellerin, good ball control there. Back to Dumont Chamberlain. Chamberlain holds it in over to Pellerin. Trying to cycle it around, but uh, the Devils are actually being pretty good to be right on their heels. Now they keep it in to their zone. So rather than getting maybe a full line change, they're only going to have one player with fresh legs out there for the Devils as this ball goes down into the opposing end. And pass. It's a pretty intense game back and forth. I mean, each, each team has their chances to get the, the shots off. And, but the Devils, to, they were kind of having trouble trying to get it over the red line, but they finally do get it in. When they do get it in, they can finally settle up and go around and take some shots. But uh, just trying to break the barrier, trying to get in. The good for the team is for keeping them in line. Face off one by the Devils. Good play there as Timis fires that ball into Devil's territory. Good effort there by Annabelle Demores. She chases that one down all the way into the corner. Tried to set things up early. Is back the other way. Come the Devils. This is Marie May Brianne. Now Sarah Richet will have this ball. You see Gmiss is playing a man on man now, trying to just basically stick on their man, waiting for their chances. Which is surprising because earlier in the game it almost seemed like the Devils would be the ones to be doing that, but now that uh, their uh, team miss is realizing that they're up one goal they can they can keep them to the outside but shouldn't be that that easy to be going around them. all right Marie Soleil Dumont dumps it down into Devils territory Jessica Henley gets hit off the ball now here comes Plore Dubac Dubak, she's gonna throw this ball into the corner. Gonna be picked up on the other side by Lordy. Lordy, two Devils defenders on her. And she gets wrestled to the ground there. Yeah, the ball came loose and I think they're just tired now. But uh, they to blow the whistle, he wasn't seeing anything move and he didn't really see it come loose. 
five left to go in the first. Seems like it's been a longer first period. Longer there, first period. There a lot of whistles, yeah. yeah. A lot of stoppage of time. I believe there's almost about three or four penalties. And that is it. Yeah. Yeah, at least you got music from uh, Mr. Wallace in the game, so that's good. <laughs> Yes, Fred Wallace with a good taste in music. Yeah, the old duffel bag from his high school days. Working hard in the corner. Here she comes back the other way. Kira Zanbelt throws it up That's to McCray. Oh. McCray almost chased that one down. Moreau's gonna just throw this into the corner now. Big hit there by Timas. Here's Lori Anna Brienne. Almost had a breakaway, but just couldn't wrangle it together. Brienne now, almost had it again. It's just two bad changes from each side. You got the possession of the ball and you want to get changed when you're that close. You just tell your D that I'm changing, I'm changing, hold the ball to the Or get it over and then change. Yeah, it seems like there was a little bit of uh, miscommunication there on both ends. Devils pressuring hard on, on the side boards. Now we're under a minute left to go. In this first period, one nothing team S over the Seaway Valley Devils. Matt Sanderson, Billy Nickel, bringing you the action up here in the broadcast booth at the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center here in Owen Sound. This is the gold medal game of the 2018 Canadian Broomball Juvenile Championship. And I said that wrong, but nevertheless, <laughs> it's still the gold medal game on the women's end of things. Two very, very good teams. Yeah, very smart teams. Ooh. What a play out in front. And Team S, that is Brittany Ford Dubach, who has been around all day, all over that ball. And She's in the right spot. Right spot at the right time. Nice pass from behind the line. Seen her wide open. Right thing to do when you got her person wide open. But good four check by 55 to get the ball loose and get her to make a play. Goes in and chases by 55. No one's on her, and the D is just a little too late to get back on. Great play there. And now it's a, a key 2 nothing lead. Now there might be a little bit more offense. Great play there. Knocked the side off the shoulder of Zanbel. As the clock winds down. 2 nothing for Timis. Shot knocked away. And Billy, the Devils here. They gotta figure out something to uh, get a spark going. Well, and I think, well, especially the second goal, it was just a forgotten man. He needs to either use the boards to get back up or just start hustling right in front. It's man on man. If that girl's right beside her, that goal is not going to go in. But uh, they just, they keep pounding at it and the Devils will get uh, their chances coming in. But Team S is really good being on the defensive, keeping them to the outside. But Team S is also beating them to the ball in the Devils end. So. We want to thank Dairy Queen here in Old Town for the refreshments. The food we're about to eat. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's uh, been a long day up here at the broadcast booth, and we're very fortunate that, that Dairy Queen could provide us with that. You know, when I originally moved to Old Town a couple of years ago, Billy, I, I do live downtown, but I just walked down the street, go to Dairy Queen. But I didn't realize how good the burgers and fries actually were. It's, it's always, always kind of, yeah, it's been kind of a hidden gem. I mean, when we're out at the beach, too, we'll get an ice cream that's in the home. But I, I don't eat food at all. I, mean, I really like the fries and the, and the, and the, and the sandwiches at the beach. Yeah. 
convenient, especially in salt. Always telling Sam every time we take the bike out, we use it. And the joke of the day I'd like to make is you can't have a Sunday right now because it is Saturday. You have to, to wait until tomorrow to go to Dairy Queen and get your Sunday. <laughs> Oh, it's cold enough outside. Yeah, I only get one now. <laughs> it is. It's all, almost still like winter, but nevertheless, intense inside the Bay Shore here as T mess up two nothing on the Seaway Valley Devils, and T mess trying to get more offense from their club here. Well, that's the same story again. Like, you got two team miss girls on one Devils trying to make an offensive player in the Devils' end. Team miss is just being stronger on them. The Devils need to really start breaking out soon. That one is brought over to Zandelt. Here, Zandelt turns this one over and kept in once again. You gotta think it's hard not only to, to really get anything going, Billy, if you're always constantly hemmed in your own end, mm -hmm. but it's gonna tire you out a lot more. You're working harder to try to prevent another goal, which they're already down in a two nothing hole. You gotta get some offense started somewhere. Yeah, but it's, it's, they gotta be strong and fast and start walking the ball out on their own because the team miss is gonna be right on top of them, so it's hard to even make a pass with everybody. Cover. If you're one on one and you take that one step away from them, then you can make the play yourself. Just get it over the red line and set it up. The one note that I can say for the Devils is they have a lot of speed. They should be. They should try to use more of that to their advantage. Maybe get more bounces off the boards. A dump, a dump and chase. Like if you cross feed it right across, so it's not icing. At least yeah. you can start running towards it. Fighting hard in the boards for it. That was number 22, Green End again. Back the other way, Jessica Henley coming up the far boards. McCray now after that ball. On the other side, stops behind the net. Still kept in there. It just Tina seems to be all over them. Here's another chance of the net. Oh, nice. Just squeezed the pin. She wasn't too sure about it either. But good job on the uh, Devils defense to take away the pass because it seems like if that pass gets over, she's uh, it's been free, but good shot. Here's Zanvelt trying to spark her team a little bit more. Ball now goes into the corner. McNairn. Now to the other side. That's what you gotta do, Coons. you just run it right across. Coons trying to create some kind of offensive leverage here. And it's almost been kind of the exact same scenario. They bring it in one side of the boards into T Miss's end, and then it comes out the the other side. And when they're in there, they're not in T Miss's end for very long. Here comes T Miss. That's Claudine Pellerin. She turns the ball over. Here's Coons again. Bouchard keeps it in. Good play by her. Can't hold it in now though as Zandel. She went, she flipped it right into a bunch of crowds. If you have the wide open man on the far side, why wouldn't you just roll it over and walk over the line? Some of it just taking a look or maybe that girl on the board is going to yell and let her know we're there. It's just it's communication and minor breakdowns. You gotta kind of think, especially when you're 
you have had the, the non-stop pressure from Timas. Maybe sometimes that communication isn't always there because you're worried about, oh, if I turn this ball over in a wrong way, it backfires. And you're right there. Bolio keeps it in. Sarah Richet up to Bollinger. Ball out of play. Yeah, I just... It's hard, it's hard to play a team that, like Team S who is constantly running and constantly just forechecking right in your end. Devils just got to find a way to control the game. It's going to be hard. Quick passes here and there just on where everyone is. And you mentioned off the top the fact of it's going to it's going to be key for Timis when they came out to start this one. You could really see that this is a poised team. They were ready to go, already finding that strong chemistry, even when they were warming up. Yeah, just uh, everyone was just like they're fired up, they're ready to go. They just they want it. I'm not saying the Devils don't want it. It's just the Devils need to find somewhere where they can all put together and bring it out on their end. Because a lot of times, so one person will have the ball. Try and pass and give it away or just get scrambled and don't 13 28 left in this second period. Team is up by two. Devil's looking for some kind of answer. Nice dump out. But they once again team is just like Hawks tracking that ball. They do a great job with it. And see, and that would be a perfect opportunity to pass it back to your defense, swing it over and bring it to the other side, but they're getting kind of antsy is what they do. They, they just need one to get back into the game. And here they come, oh, a couple people tied up there. Mackenzie Coons fighting hard for their defender. Coon seems like she's taken a little bit of well, aggression out there. And you there. know what? I, I, I applaud the Devils for actually showing some emotion and getting feisty. Why not? Yeah. Back the other way. Over top of the net. Into the side boards. Dumont Bouchard. She'll track this one over to Demores turnover now and that speed that we mentioned both of those Coons girls uh, I believe they are sisters Michaela and Mackenzie both have a lot of speed and looks like there's going to be no it's just, just a big hit there by Timis shot saved Rebound, just missed wide. Good save by the goalie. The defense, when they come back on a two on one, they always say take the pass away. And sometimes you have to be a little bit selfish to the goalie and let her have the shot. I find she collapses way too much with the actual shooter. She could be taken out on a two on one. Paid off. What do I do? Mean? <laughs> that's what I do. I almost. I don't want to say I leave the goal here to drive, but on a two-on-one, I gotta be the best off if you just want to make a shot. There is McMillan. Crowd's starting to get in. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get something started here as Seaway De Valley Devils, they had a, a nice road to that second place spot. You saw when they when they kind of went through everything, it seemed like they were almost a team to beat despite having one or two losses on the scorecard. But here, um, you can see why this Teamus team is 6-0, very poised in their own end. The other thing that I'm impressed with is their passes. Yes, passes have been pretty much on for the whole game, but they, not only are they on, but they know where everyone is to pass as well. 
over into the corner. Dubuck has the second goal here. See, the, de the Devils were working in a change, but if that was the Devils player holding, that team this would be all over them in their own end. So why not the Devils make a little chance as you guys start making plays? This is the offensive rush that they need. So a, little, a little bit of a longer period of time now for the Devils in this zone. Great opportunity here. So that's Jessica Riche shoots that ball over to the other side. From the Dubuck that misses it originally. And Moreau is going to save this one. Devils giving the goalie a little jab. It's, it's, it's really nothing, but what can result is a white uh, the team has come and given her a shove, and that's the penalty. And that gets the Devils back into the game, too. You want to stand up for your goalie, but at the same time, you got to be smart with it. You can't be going down a man, especially with 10 minutes left for 2 nothing. That's still lots of time to come up. We've seen stranger things happen, not only in broom ball and hockey, but in sports in general. So you never say it's over until it's <laughs> no, fully done. No. He said, ask the, the Odessa goalie that when he gave it to one of the Flyers. Wide open net in overtime. The Flyers goalie shot it at the blue line, hit the post, but the goalie was down. Went down. He almost looked like he just gave up and he was... Uh, kind of just sulking when he was down, but the game was still on. His D had to run back and tell him, the game's still on, the game's still on, still play. Yeah. You, uh, when I originally saw that one, you think they're... Well, you, you, had, you had a lot of people cheering and yelling, and you think maybe that's it, and then you know, all of a sudden you get one of your familiar faces, your defense, say, get back in that, get back in that. Yeah. And he had no stick either. No, no, and he, he gave it, he kind of flung it away and tried to make a save and dive for it, and he thought he missed the whole thing, but <laughs> they hit the post. The Flyers did come out with the win eventually. Well, it's weird how, how it's a slight turn of events sometimes. Good effort there by the Devils. We're seeing more offense from them in the last five minutes or so there. More desire, more like rough in the corners, digging for it. it and, still, still needs some more to go. But. And, and as we mentioned too, they are using that speed now. They're trying to get the ball past and behind the team missed defenders. And even an effort like that, that's... Well, you got a girl far side who's wide open. Why wouldn't they just take the look? They, they're getting a uh, little impatient trying to get it over the red line. Capitalize on opportunities, and there once again in Team Misses End. There's Marie Eve Bouchard really working it through the boards there, doing a great job. Goes behind the boards, or behind the net. Flips. The alley oop. <laughs> It, why he makes chances. So if Timus wins this game, they will go seven and zero, and they will capture the gold medal in this tournament. The Canadian. Uh, I'm not knocking any other, but Canada has the best football, and it's it's the most competitive. And there is good teams from the states. That don't get me wrong. I. I know that for a fact, but it's just the, the programs and the the, uh, you know, the training, the well, got HD telecast. I mean, for everything for Canadian broomball, it's certainly promising and very exciting for the future as well. But this is the best as it can get for the juveniles as well. So to make it this far, it's no uh, no short of uh, greatness. I mean, gold and silver. Much more you can ask. It's a big country. <laughs> well, you even look at it in the vantage point from the Killside Flyers. They've been on, I believe, the national stage a couple times. Mm -hmm. And Killside just 10 minutes, 15 minutes there's, outside there's of the There's more people in the stands than there is in Killside. Exactly. So it shows you how much it means to be able to come away and capture 
a gold. But you are right. It just see, it seems that even with these Quebec teams and even with the teams in Saskatchewan and Manitoba, you look across the board and they're just flourishing with talent. There we go. Here's a little bit of a harder shot there from the Devils. Oh, we got a high stick coming to the, the Devils. Kind of incidental, but it's a high stick nonetheless. She's not wearing a cage. She's not having some chicklets. <laughs> yeah. You see it here. Turned around, going for it, and got the stick right up. But still five and a five minutes, ten seconds left. There's lots of time. Yep. Two minutes left. A two-minute power play here, and team this. Well, they could they could plain and simply go and, and really change the dynamic of this game, even with a third goal. Almost classify as putting, putting a, a nail in the coffin. Yeah, yeah. They, just, they really need to kill this off. Kill this off and still, with the three minutes that'll be remaining, with three and change, there's still lots of time for two goals. Good stop there by Zane Belt. Every time I hear three minutes left in the game, still brings me back to uh, the Olympics. Four, four or five years ago. Uh, yeah, it was about four years ago. Yeah, four years ago, yeah. with the the women's uh, team coming back and tying things up and then yep. winning it against the U.S. in OT. Anything can happen. And all you need is is like you said before, one little thing to go their way, one little turnover that leads to a breakaway, and. Turns out to be a great thing. Good defense here by the Devils. Eliza Bollinger, you gotta give her credit here as she's really tracking back and forth. This one goes through the crease to the outside. Knocked away by Zan Belt. Minute and 14 seconds through this power play. Not too many solid chances. I mean, one shot from the point that kind of just flooded in, but uh, not too much traffic in front. But the Devils are playing, playing uh, the zone or playing the box and just keeping them to the outside. No shots going in. Killing time. They need they need to kill this or it's, it could be all over. Good defense there in front. Zanbelt tracking that nicely. Team is putting on the pressure now. Brings it over to the side. They'll look to, to get the play started. Alexa Lordy back to Bolio. Across takes a shot in the air. Those those ones that go flying right up in the air, a lot of the times if these sticks come flying out, and on instant. The Devils killed off the, the penalty kill. Now a chance. Here's Coons back to Bollinger. Bollinger working with it. Going to give her, her team some time to be able to get into that zone. And this is the time to, to strike. Van Belt, great effort working to the corner of that red line to keep it in. Good. Back the other way. And Morrow just gonna swallow that one up. Morrow really hasn't had not too much, which is kind of kind of scary sometimes too. He's been out in the cold. But, but, uh, Keep pounding away, and, and like she's short, she can get her up. If you can get the, the ball up high, the better. But she's been pretty good. I mean, the defense has been strong, but 
now the pressure's on. I mean, it's all or nothing now. We hit the three minute mark left to go in this period. Opportunity in front for the Devils. Probably one of the best opportunities they've had all game long. The Devils are probably thinking about pulling the goalie. She's out of the crease right now. So Adam Morrison for reminding me. So two and a half minutes to get two goals and she should be, once they get possession, she should be coming. But the, the Devils coach is saying, hold on. But then again, trying to get possession in there. And it, the what a hit oh, yeah. by Zandelt. Looking down and time still ticking off that clock. Goaltender still in there. Sarah Richet gonna go to the far corner. This is Marie-Yves Bouchard. There she goes. Finally going. I think she's a little 30 seconds too late. Actually. Down two goals in the windmill game. Chance in front was knocked aside. Good defense there. There's Mackenzie Coons. Coons going to bring it up the far or the sideboards. Stopped here and team is in a position where they're up by two. They just need to need to hang on, on and play yep. solid defense. But Devils got to show some adversity. They got to get right in there. Two of them on that ball at all times. Trying setting up. Coons, opportunity in front. Bollinger with the shot. Coons now. Folio is going to flip this one out. And this is going to go down into the devil's end. And this could be the deal breaker right here. It is. There it is. 3 0. And that's Annabelle DeMores with the third goal. Seems like a tired defense with the fat, fast forward. Fast forward coming through, uh, just beating her to the ball, but she kept battling through it. Eventually, she just ran out of gas and his team. Threw her stick at that. And usually, if they throw their stick and it's an empty net, it's in the goal anyway. But, uh, you know, it's they, she made sure it went in. At the end of the day, it was just fresh legs that ended up beating the tired defense as Eliza Bollinger had a great chance there to try to get some offense going for her team, but they could not. You don't want to predict anything out of... No, but for these young girls to make it at a Canadian coast to coast and be and have to be either first, second, or third, or just to represent your province in this tournament is a huge honor. And they'll remember it for the rest of their lives because I still have some of the guys that I play that are 35 years old or 30 or whatever still that remember they're playing juniors and the stories they had when they went to Saskatchewan and when they went here and when they went there. It's, you know, they'll remember it forever. But then you got time to make more memories with their seniors. As this clock winds down, Timis going to go undefeated here. And with a shutout, the three nothing victory, Timis captures women's gold here at the 2018 Juvenile Canadian Blue Ball Championships. Congratulations to them, but also congratulations for the good effort for the Seaway Valley Devils as well. Yeah, there's certainly nothing to hang your head to. <laughs> it was a good game and a great tournament for each each team. Good for Team Miss to come undefeated. That's usually pretty rare. Like you, you find guys that go 6 and all the way through and come to the last game and they can't make it through. But so it's, it's exciting to see the junior program still working in both provinces, especially in all those. So it's, You'll see all these girls eventually down the road at the end we ever host the Nationals, their Senior Nationals, so we'll see that, they'll be there. There it is. It's, it's, it's either you're going to stick
stick in the face or he gets pretty emotional. <laughs> well, you got to think he's got a bronze on the men's side yep. now and a gold on the women's side. And you got to give the, the coaches a great effort, but also just great effort for everybody in this tournament to be able to come out here to own sound and a lot of traveling i assume probably a couple tiring nights yes oh yeah well, <laughs> yeah no and, and it takes a lot of commitment to come out especially well from ottawa and ottawa being in the same province it's still just as far I mean, but at least you get to go home knowing that you played your best and you played everything to your ability and you still came home with the silver medal at the Canadian Nations. All right. So, more to come here on Rogers TV. Matt Sanderson, Bill Nickel, and we'll be bringing you more action here inside the, the Bayshore. Stay tuned. More on the other side of the room. 